Good morning. A couple people rolling in. We're, we're going to wait uh, for others to roll in before we get started here. Welcome this morning. Thanks for joining us. Seeing people starting to roll in here, and uh, we'll get started in just a few seconds. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Well, I'll get, I'll get going here and others will continue to roll in. Uh, well, good morning. My name is Harry Urschel and I lead Minnesota Crossroads Career Network. And I'm really glad you joined us this morning. I hope everybody's got their cup of coffee at hand and, and uh, able to maybe snack on something while you uh, watch and participate in a great webinar this morning. We have some uh, terrific presentations for you, and hopefully it's going to be worthwhile for you to be able to get help with your job search, get some encouragement, get some hope in your process, and uh, um, get you closer to finding that job here quickly. Uh, we're grateful for everybody that attends and for the people that participate and, and volunteer to, to help with Crossroads, and uh, um, we uh, will jump right in. You know, uh, one of our hopes with Crossroads is to provide the best help and resources for your job search as we can, while also pointing to the encouragement and hope in Jesus Christ. Uh, it should be no surprise that the Bible has a great deal of wisdom for life, and one passage particularly relevant says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. This isn't about making the most money in a multi-level marketing opportunity. It's about wisely examining what's before you and making good decisions. I think we often think that if a job opportunity is offered, it must be the right one. That's certainly not the case. And sometimes making the most of a particular opportunity is to know when to walk away. Uh, picking which opportunities make sense for you and which don't is one way to exercise a lot of wisdom. Through asking good questions, seeking wise counsel, and prayer, we can make wiser decisions about our job search and every other area of our life. I hope that as you're looking for your next opportunity, you look for multiple ways to seek and apply great wisdom to your choice. When you truly seek God for the answers, you'll become wiser. Let me open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll move on with the rest of our presentations this morning. Lord, we thank you for this chance to come together, even if it's virtually over video, but uh, we pray that you use this time for your purposes, that everyone can walk away with some fresh ideas, help in their process, and hope and encouragement, you know, particularly from looking to you for wisdom and, and hope in their lives. Lord, we thank you for this time and pray that it honors you in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that, I... Uh, want to share, I've got a short video here. It's uh, by Michael McDowell, who won the 2021, I believe it was, Daytona 500. He's a NASCAR driver. And I get, that, get it that NASCAR doesn't appeal to everybody, but he went through some particular challenges in his road to getting there. And uh, um, no pun intended saying road to get to getting there for a NASCAR driver, <laughs> but he went through some, some real challenges. And I think a lot of people can relate to things don't always go as you think they will. And it gets hard work to, to get where you want to get to. And so hopefully this is encouraging for you and you get some perspective and ideas through that. So let me take just a moment here to get this up on screen and uh, we'll roll the video. Being a NASCAR driver, there's 39 losers and one winner. I remember thinking, I almost died right there. Nine months later, I was without a job, sleeping in my rental car in the parking lot. If I ever had a shot to win a race, this is it. Right after that national anthem, you load into the car. Nerves are kicking in. When they say, gentlemen, start your engines, you light that, that engine up. You hear that sound of eight cylinders and 750 horsepower fire up. That's when it gets real. You can't lose focus, not even for a second. Inside that race car, it is hot, it is loud, it is rough. But there's not a lot of time to unclench from the steering wheel because you're holding on so tight. 
And when you're in that zone, everything slows down and gets quiet. Your brain is going faster than those wheels are. You're not just thinking about where that car is, where you are, but you know the move you're going to make, how you're going to make it, what you need to do. Even though you're 200 miles an hour, inches apart or inches from the wall, you don't feel like it. You feel like you're in complete control until you're not. I came into NASCAR in 2008. I was young and arrogant and had a chip on my shoulder. I'd won everything that I've ever done uh, leading up to that point and, and felt like that wasn't going to stop. And very quickly, I got, I got very humbled in this sport. 2008, the first thing right out of the gate, race two, Texas. I had this huge crash. I got into to turn one and got loose and the car started to spin out and, and I went to the brakes and there was no brakes there. I went to the gas and it just hooked. And when it hooked and turned, I was facing the wall. And I remember thinking, man, this is gonna hurt. Oh, guys, whoa, whoa, oh, no, oh, my gosh. When I hit the wall, I was doing about 185 miles an hour when I went head on into the wall. Somewhere around 100 Gs was the impact, and then barreled 13 times. Once that first impact happened, everything got super quiet, and it, it sounded like somebody hit the mute button, and I could just hear a crunch, crunch crunch and I was just thinking when is this going to be over and when it finally landed I remember wiggling my 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 fingers wiggling my toes trying to figure out all right I'm, I got anything broke am I alive what just happened and once I got out of the car and I stepped down I realized that they're playing it on the the replay and when I saw it from that perspective I was like oh man I almost died right there you know, you want to get known for winning races and winning championships, but you know, I got known, you know, for that big accident. I came into the sport um, with a big contract and a multi-year deal, and nine months later, I was without a job, and uh, my wife was pregnant, expecting our first child, and just uh, so much happening in that that period of time, and so many trials that it was really hard to wrap my head around. You know what God was doing. I remember, you know, just opening up my Bible and just praying like, Lord, what do you want me, what do you want me to do? And I just closed my eyes and I opened up my Bible and I landed on James 1. Um, and, and James 1 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be not lacking in anything. And it's just one of those moments where just God spoke to me that this, um, you know, hard times that I'm facing, it, it's for a reason, that it's doing something in me and through me and it's teaching me about um, what it means to persevere and what it means to, to lean in and trust in God. And that perspective really changed, you know, what, it, what my next 10 years looked like in the sport. It was rough and it was a grind. and you know, showing up to the racetrack, knowing that you're not gonna be able to run all the races and not run all the laps and, um, you know, drive into the racetracks and uh, sleeping in my rental car in the parking lots and, and staying in other people's hotels and, and bumming rides just to get there, that it wasn't uh, wasted, that God was using it and that he was doing something that was shaping and molding um, not just my career, but me. I was doing what I had to do to, to stay in the sport, to continue to gain experience and build relationships that one day would hopefully allow me to go to back to full-time racing. And I started with a small team and we were running 30th every weekend. And then, you know, six months later, we're running 25th. And six months later, we're running 20th. And it was just a slow process and a build. And, you know, finally got to where I was running full-time and running competitively still wasn't winning uh wasn't running top 10 top five but we were in the mix and and it started to feel like there was you know light at the end of the tunnel and finally got to the point last year where we were competitive every weekend and getting top 10s and getting some top fives and you know that took 14 years to know that you know you can be without a job and just a a second just helped me to really just trust God, that God had a plan and doesn't always look how, how I want it to look or how I expected it to look, but God is faithful. And you know, I, I came to the racetrack week after week hopeful 
that this is the week. This is the week it's going to happen. This is the week that everything's going to come together, and I'll finally get that opportunity to win a race. And um, you know, it took a long, long time and, and a lot of trials to get there, but my opportunity finally came. First race of the year, our biggest race in the sport, Daytona 500. The granddaddy. If I ever had a shot to win a race, this is it. It finally all started to come together. Coming to about five laps to go, I felt like I was in a really good spot. I was right where I wanted to be. I had a plan, sitting in the top five, sitting third. Coming off of turn two, I had a big run. I was pushing the two car. He went for it, tried to pass the 22, and it was literally like the seas parted. They, they had contact, the two went to the right, the 22 went to the left, and I went right through the middle. And then the caution comes out with the checkered flag, and you sit there and you think, man, I think I just won the Daytona 500. Um, and so there was, there was a, a 90 seconds there where they didn't know who had won the race. They had to go back and look at the film, and immediately, and my mind just went, oh, what if you didn't? What if you didn't win? You're so close. What if you didn't win? And then they said 34 to victory lane. I just remember just being overwhelmed, just overwhelmed with emotion. I mean, I was making noises that I didn't know I could make. And uh, just so much pure just excitement to finally win a race and to do it at the Daytona 500. And I remember about 30 minutes after the, the, the win, just this overwhelming just gratefulness and very sombering of feeling like, man, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Like God literally provided this opportunity and it started 14 years ago. God was walking with me through the valleys before we got to the mountaintop, the grind and the trials. He was shaping and molding me for this moment, to be ready for this moment. When you get to the mountaintop and you know that God's walked with you the entire time and that, that Christ dwells in us, He died on the cross for me so I could be forgiven of my sins. That's enough for me to give Him my entire life and to follow Him. There's nothing greater than having that peace of knowing that God is with you and walks with you. My name's Michael McDowell, and I am second. Wow, you know, it, it really makes me think about what do I rely on when I'm going through the grind, when things aren't going my way, when I, my plans are different than what is transpiring right now? Where do I turn? What do I rely on to, to get me through that grind? And uh, unfortunately, I don't always pick the right, make the right choices. And so, uh, you know, thinking about where, where do you rely or get your strength from when you're relying on when you're going through that grind? Anyway, I uh, hope that was helpful for you. And uh, it's uh, every I've seen that film a couple of times now, and each time it's just been uh, kind of inspiring for me. I am really glad to uh, present Jenny. Jenny Jeffords uh, um, is who you all came to see. You, it was uh, what you signed up for here today. And she's terrific. I've gotten to know her a little bit here over the last few years and, and just have a great appreciation for her. I knew her, knew of her before we met because uh, multiple times people would say, you know, I've, I networked with Jenny Jeffords and she was so encouraging and so helpful and she just stuck with me and, and uh, just has a great uh, uh, sense of inspiring people and, and doing things right. She's been in development for business development for Solution Consulting for many years. And uh, we were just talking before we got on here today about uh, it's, it's a relationship business and really networking for your next job is also a relationship business. It's not just uh, uh, one hit wonders all the time. And so I'm really glad to have her talk today about what she does so well, and hopefully it'll make a big difference and help you in your process of looking for your next job too. Thanks, Jenny. Welcome. And I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Before I get started, I wanted to lay out the mor this morning's presentation 
I've got about 30 minutes of content. I'm going to be taking uh, several several breaks along the way. So please put your questions in chat. And then what I'll do is I'll stick around after the presentation if you have any further questions. And Harry, thanks for um, having me today. And I'm going to assume most of you are in some sort of a job search. When you hear the word networking, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Can you please put this in chat and go with the emotions? And I'll read some of this off so you can just share when that word networking comes to your head. I'll wait to see what people say. Quick chats, okay? Putting yourself out there. Absolutely. Excited to meet new people, meeting new people. Fear of contacting strangers. Anybody feel awkward? Uncomfortable? To connect with new people with or without similar backgrounds? Sharing and learning. I like that. Helping each other. Hi, Tanya. Tall, tough to cultivate new contacts. Support system. Expanding my horizons. Anyone else? These are good, thank you. Um, when you, what, I'm here to share some just, you know, a lot of information, but I've got a lot of uh, incredible stories of why networking works. What I can tell you is you will get a job. Expect to be pleasantly surprised. You're gonna create friendships along the way. And most of you will meet a total stranger that will help you find your next job. So let's get started. As Harry said, I've been in um, technology sales. I've been doing this for about 20 years, calling on the Twin Cities market. And when we got hit by the 2008 recession, a number of my clients lost their jobs. So I spent two years connecting these clients, the existing clients that were maybe hiring or they knew their companies were hiring. Um, since then, since 2008, I've helped over 3,000 people look for their jobs. And every person I meet teaches me something different. There's about 20% of the people I meet that just do a fantastic job, um, exceptional when it comes to networking. And I'd like to share with you today how they dif differentiate themselves from the others. It's just the simple, basic, things they do that makes a difference. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go over today's agenda. Um, I'm gonna be talking about where to start, setting the tone, how to show up, develop a plan, follow up, and tips and suggestions. And I'm, as I said, I'm gonna be taking some breaks. So please put your question, questions in chat. Why is networking important? Surveys show that 80% of jobs are gonna be through word of mouth or, for, or through your professional network. Companies are more likely to hire someone that they know or can be, or can be referred to compared to an unknown candidate. Networking provides valuable information on the job market and on the company cultures. It's about having a community of contacts that will be critical to your job search and beyond. The more people you know, the greater chance of the success. So continue to build your network of LinkedIn contacts. Creating a network of, of professional adds to your resource library. So think of this as your knowledge and sharing of ideas. 
This is a great way to enhance your professional brand and networking develops long lasting relationships. Questions so far? Anyone have questions? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about where to start. You know, people kind of say, well, what's the plan? And I, I've always said, there's really no right answer. I, there's a lot of people I talk to that take this flatter approach. Others are gonna be more strategic. You're going to get a lot of advice along the way, but do what makes sense for you. Think of a time in your life when you did something kind for someone else. How did that make you feel? Remember this. People generally want to help you, so don't get hung up that you're bothering them when you reach out to people. So let's go back over the years of all the people you know and start making a list and kind of look outside the box. So look at like your former uh, coworkers, neighbors, relatives, alumni organizations, professional groups, churches, school booster clubs military organizations, job fairs, networking groups, um, meetups, your financial planner, your dentist, your doctor, your hairstylist, tax accountants, the list goes on. I often hear from people how surprised they were when these total strangers go and take the extra mile for them. In most cases, you will get a job through a second level connection that someone in your network that connected with you, with you with somebody that someone that you didn't know. So when I talk with people of how they got their jobs, it's all over the place. It might be my my friend's cousin's wife, or one of the dance moms, or some random person I met at the airport, um, a neighborhood gathering. Um, I mean, the the list goes on. So it's not just a one. I mean, it it the my cousins, friends, neighbors brother during Thanksgiving when they all got together. Any questions so far? So how do you set the tone? The response time is gonna be really important. So when someone sets up an introduction, you know, through an email, try to do this within eight hours. What impression are you giving that person if you respond one to two weeks later? Arrange for a 30 minute conversation, give them choices on how they wanna meet. So it might be phone, it might be video, it could be in person. I'm finding these video and in-persons can be, can be really effective, it's just how you handle it. If you are doing an in-person, meet them on their side of town. I had a, one of my, a person wanted to meet, and she lived in Anoka and I live in Apple Valley. And she insisted I go up to Anoka and she would not come down or meet me in the middle. So we did not have a meeting. Share your intent up front. You know, why are you meeting? Let them know you're in a job search. Ask, ask them if they want to see your resume up front or right away or through email. Sometimes I get bombarded with, with a resume, a marketing plan, and an and, and a lengthy email. So find out what they want first to learn a little bit about you because it can be a little, it can be overwhelming for the people receiving the information. If again, you don't ask what they want. The day before you meet, send out a reminder just to say, hey, I look forward to seeing you. And this is my mobile number. Any questions so far? So I put any questions. I'll wait a few minutes. Yeah, Jenny, somebody's, somebody's asking, does the networking approach change based on the industry? Highly technical engineering versus sales or marketing mm -hmm. contacts, et cetera. I'm going to say no. I'm, just, I'm going to say people are people. I've never had anyone say that it's different because I do talk to people, you know, within sales, marketing, finance, technology, operations. So I think it's across the board because you're dealing with people. Anything else? So I'm gonna sprinkle in here. I put a list of don't do. Remember I talked about that 20% that they do this amazing job. 
I've got another 20% I'd rather not talk about, but I'm gonna ask, just tell you a few things. When you meet with someone for the first time, please do not bash your boss or your peers. Just don't go there. If you meet him the second time, don't go there. Because eventually, if you continue to do this, people start getting uncomfortable and they start mentioning, you know, did they bash their boss? Yeah, they did. They did that to me. So just so you know, that gets out. So just don't. And it gets sometimes out to your boss. So that's, that's a don't. Another one, when you, um, when you meet, here's another don't. When you meet people, you, let's say it's your fourth meeting and you've got three more meetings after that, I wouldn't recommend you tell them you're my fourth meeting and I got three more after this because I'm going to feel like I'm in this kind of this manufacturing line. So just don't say it. You don't need to tell me where I sit with the number of people you met that day. So those are some don'ts. So we're going to talk about um, coming prepared. So you're going to do your homework up front on the person you're meeting. You're going to look at their LinkedIn profile. You're going to look at their sh your shared connections, places that they work. Have they published anything? You're going to read it. Volunteering, where did they volunteer? Where did they go to college? Did they go to college? You know, it doesn't matter, but just get a feel for kind of where they're from. There's a good chance you're going to find a lot of common connections or interests. So it's just something you can, a good, you know, you can talk about that when you see them. You're going to come into these meetings with an open heart and not live in your head. Because what you're going to find when people come in with just with an open heart, conversations are going to feel more natural. You will be remembered. My best conversations are people that stay authentic. I talked with a job seeker the other day and he said he is meeting some amazing people. It's because he's coming in with an open mind and he wants to hear people's stories. I talk to a lot of uh, technology professionals and when they go through the job loss, one of the first things they'll tell me is, I'm an introvert and networking is going to be a real struggle. Everybody has their superpowers. I find that introverts are some of the best listeners. That alone is their superpower. So when you meet um, the people, when you meet them in person or on, on a video call, remind them again who introduced the two of you. Talk about their shared connections and the things in their LinkedIn that drew your attention. You are showing them that you're interested in them. A great way to start is, hey, thanks for your time. Before I get into me, I wanna hear a little, little bit about you. I noticed these are our shared connections and you might find that some of their shared connections are their, some really good friends and they're friends of yours too. Ask about their interests or volunteering because you know when you ask questions and then you wait and you listen for the answers, don't just have them respond quickly and then you start talking. Just listen to what they have to say to you because you're going to let these conversations flow naturally. This is not an interview. You are there to create a connection, not a transaction. Any questions? Yeah, Jenny, someone's asking whether face-to-face -face meetings are still preferred or are there other forms that work as well? It well, and those who've networked with me, I, I mean, everyone says face-to-face -face is gonna be the best, but with people home office, a lot of times they don't wanna leave their houses. And so when, when people wanna meet with me, I mean, I, those, there's a few of you on that know me, um, I do video. I find I can make some really good connections over video. Again, it's how they handle it. But if you give me a choice, sometimes people will say, well, I wanna meet you. And I said, I really, I live in Apple Valley. I, you know, it's a half hour to drive to meet you or if we meet in the middle, it's a four, half hour meeting, a half hour driving back, that's an hour because I have a full-time job. And they say, no, I want to meet you. And it's like, oh my gosh. So I, when someone gives me a choice, in my mind, I'm saying, thank you. I really appreciate they are respecting my time. So just give them choices. I would definitely do video. I would not do a phone call. I would definitely do a video. But then some people in your network are going to be videoed out because they have video meetings all day. So again, give them choices of phone, video, or in person. But again, I've had some really good connections through video. 
Anything else? That's great. There, uh, somebody just responding to that to, about making a connection and not a transaction, and that's absolutely, absolutely right. Mm -hmm. you know, your points, Jenny, on setting the tone in the meeting is just so critically important. I mean, you, I know, obviously do a ton of uh, networking meetings. I do as well. And, and uh, you know, once in a while you get somebody that you, you start talking with them and they tell you all the reasons they're not landing a job and all the bad experiences they had and, uh, you know, dumping all this stuff out. And, I'm, you know, I'm grateful that they feel comfortable talking to me, but then, you know, they want referrals to other people. And I'm not really happy about sicking that kind of an answer you know on someone else. I, I'm going to talk about that. It's like, be careful because exactly. that affects my credibility. We're going to talk about that. I have another don't. My name is Jenny. It's not Janie. Don't call me Janie when you meet with me or Penny or whatever. It's Jenny. <laughs> so make sure you know the person's name. So, okay. I'll go. Ready to go on? Yep. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to show up. I'm sharing my personal preference in this area because you're going to need to make this your own. When I meet with people looking for a job, the biggest struggle, and I can truly say this and here, you can probably agree with me, is they're just not clear with what they want. And they meet with me and they hope I help them create clarity. And I struggle because I don't know them. So, you know, that's going to be the biggest. And then they come in and, and they say, well, let me give you my pitch. And when they say that, I think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be pitched too. And when they say that, I think, oh, I've got 30 minutes of listening to them. So if you come in and not have this elevator pitch feeling, you know, this is again, me speaking, I guess I said, this is what I'm thinking inside. Um, so I don't like these elevator pitches. I, you know, you come in knowing you want to listen. Remember, you're there to create a connection. And how do you do this when you're doing most of the talking? You just can't create connections that way. So I have a hard time introducing these ongoing talkers to my network because they're going to be contacting me saying, wow, they talked all the time and that affects my credibility. And then they will not meet people in my network I share because I send it to send them talkers. So again, here you can agree, the people you share it does reflect your credibility. So I've got to be careful who I connect. Um, there's a, so when you want to keep it concise and, and, and you know that whole clarity, when you meet with people, make sure it's clear, concise. Um, you can say, let me tell you quickly something about me. Tell them you're in a job transition and what you, what you did, list three things. All it is is three things. Don't list five or six. Just give me three top things. And then what are you known for? Three things. You know, how, you know, and then what types of roles are you looking for? Where do you want to go? Three things. Give me ideas of companies you're looking for or titles. If you struggle with what you're known for, go back to your uh, former employees or peers and say, hey, I'm doing a branding ex exercise. What am I known for? And why did you enjoy working with me? And then you can use that information and you can say, this is what people tell me. This is what I'm known for. Avoid using soft words like, well, I think I'm good at, or possibly, or, well, I kind, you know, I kind of. Instead, you want to say, this is what I'm known for. I'm competent here. I really do well in this way. This is my sweet spot. Make it so it sounds like you and not everybody else. I, I hear a lot of, I used to hear, and it, the word has gone away, but they go, well, I'm a strategic thought leader. And I thought, oh my gosh, here I go. It's like, don't open up with that. Or I'm an innovative transformational leader. Don't go there. Again, make it authentic, make it you. I want to know your personality. I want to know who you are because I want to send you to some people I really like. Um, I'm 50-50 on a marketing plan. Personally, I don't like them, but I know a lot of people will say, well, what's your marketing plan? So I have that available. Again, I don't need to see it. I, I match people up with personalities and industries where you want to go. And I say, well, I think my contact would really like this person. So make your intent, I mean, make this your intent. Listen 60%, talk 40. Don't do the 50-50. Try to get them to talk more than you. By listening, they will feel heard and valued. 
find out who's typically doing the hiring for the roles that you're looking for and find out, you know, what companies are growing. I mean, just ask those kind of questions. Sometimes when I meet with people that I'm networking with, I'm not always clear headed. I have maybe have come out of a meeting. I've got three things on my mind. I promised I would help someone networking. And my gosh, I've got another meeting afterward. And I really want to, I really want to be there for you. But sometimes my, I'm just not in, my head's not clear when I meet you. So help me think. Give me some ideas. You can say, hey, Jenny, I noticed in your LinkedIn, you're connected with these people. Or I noticed that uh, you, you, you know, these are the companies you know. So if you help me think, then I'm going to, then my brain's going to start to work. And there's a really good chance that I will introduce you to those people that you're asking me about. Stay open and learn something new from these people. And also my recommendation is seek advice, especially from the people that have been in a job transition in the past. Find out from people who are the Uber networkers in town. The Uber networkers have a pulse on the market and they know what's happening in real time. They may not necessarily know the people or have connections, but they hear of things. When you meet with people, take notes and respect their time. When you tell them 30 minutes, make it 30. Most cases, people will go over it, but make sure you look and say, hey, I committed to 30, let's just wrap this up. And I, so just really respect their time. I had a coffee meeting with somebody and we were, he was telling me about his background and he, um, he told me about his dream job and the dream job was working for an airplane company in Duluth. And I went back, looked at my connections, realized I knew the CIO. So I connected the two of them. She met him and she ended up hiring him. So random conversations can lead to surprises like this. At the end of most of the conversations, I like to ask people, what do you like to do for fun? You're going to see the energy shifting. And it's just kind of fun to see where that takes you. Make your meetings reciprocal. Um, I recommend, because I, I can almost, you know, usually when you meet people at the very end, they say, so what can I do for you? And I always say, I'm, I'm fine, I'm okay. But if you say it up front, be a little different and say something like, you know, I really appreciate this. I want to make sure this is reciprocal. This is really nice of you to meet me, talk with me. So I'm going to be listening to things where I can kind of help you or, or pay it back or whatever. So, and make sure you let them know I'm here to pay it forward. So if you want anyone to send my way, please do. There's a really good book. It's The Go-Giver um, by Bob Berg and David, uh, John David Mann. It's worth the read. So I will take another break. Any questions? Be sure to type any questions into the chat yes. box anytime and uh, we'll certainly respond to them. Uh, I know it, sometimes when they're getting typed, there's a kind of a lag till they show up in the chat box. So yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait. Glad to wait a little bit. Um, Jenny, can I, I tell you, just can I, keep, can I tell you another what? don't while we're waiting? Yeah. yeah. So when we meet, please don't give me a blank stare on who connected us. And then don't look at me and say, well, no, what do you do? And then as we're talking, you start, and this is a Zoom call, as we're talking, you start looking at my LinkedIn and go, oh, there you are on LinkedIn. Well, let me read this. And then you're reading it while we're talking. And then you start asking questions on my LinkedIn. So that's another, please don't. Exactly. Any questions? Someone's asking, uh, how do you select who to network with? Say that again. How do you select who to network with? Oh, are you talking about someone? Okay, so someone who's networking. I think that's where you, that's where the clarity comes in. So when you're, so when someone's talking to me and if they're clear saying, hey, these are the types of people I want to meet. These are the companies I'm trying to get into. I'm looking for these divisions. Who do you know in these divisions? Then those are the people. So you just start asking. You start to kind of drill down a little bit when you meet these people. A, some people say to me, I don't know, can you meet me? Can you introduce me to people? I'm like, well, wait a minute. Help me understand what kind of people you want to meet. So if you can help them think and just drill down, you may not know who you're going to meet, but give them an idea of like 
think about hiring managers. I'm looking for, uh, if you're in marketing, I'm looking, if you're uh, in a director role, I'm looking for the VP of marketing who does the hiring. I'm looking for someone in these companies. So I get, is that answering your question? You I just have to drill down and be clear with the types of people and the types of companies. I think that does. You know, I, you make such a good point. I mean, as you have been going through your list and describing all this, Jenny, I just smile because I, I, it's the same thing I tell people as well. And we have the same perspective on so many things. Um, I think many times people go through their networking and everybody they talk to or meet with, they ask, do you know of any jobs? And people just aren't walking job boards. They don't know what's open in their own companies in most cases. And so you really have to get, and that's all they're thinking about for you. You know, when they understand you're looking for a job, that's all they're trying to think about. You got to get them off of that and thinking about who else do they know that would be worthwhile for you to talk to as well. Yeah. And uh, those, that's really valuable. Uh, one acronym I've uh, learned a while back that I think helps you remember that is always ask people for AIR, A-I-R, ask them for advice, insight, and referrals. I like and that. That's, uh, everybody likes to be asked about for their advice and insight, and then focus on referrals. I think a lot of times when people, you know, are asking just for jobs, they go, you know, from one person to another to another asking what jobs you know of, and they don't get anything, and they think, well, this networking thing doesn't work for me. Well, they're not doing it in a way that is going to work for them. Um, and, you know, most people, everybody, as you mentioned earlier, people want to help. They just don't know how to in most cases. And so you need to help them help you. And uh, explaining that referrals are as valuable for you as anything else. I don't think we have any other questions for now. Okay, great. So we're going to go into the follow-up. Um, when you meet the people, send them a thank you note right away. You can just do this through email. Recap the connections that they offered up. If you don't hear back from the person that, that, that had committed to connecting you, and if you don't hear back within a week, resend that email and say, hey, just a reminder that you know these are the connections you had, had offered. Because sometimes I get busy and sometimes I forget. So I appreciate the gentle nudge. You're not bugging them. Again, resend it in a week with a note attached and say, just to do a reminder. Um, personalize your LinkedIn when you reach out to people. I, I do not accept uh, LinkedIn's, but just connect. I won't. Um, and I, I like to link in with people that I know or I've met. I don't do random people. I just, cause I wanna make sure my LinkedIn profile are open to meeting people. So I use that as a tool for other people who can pay it forward. Keep your network posted on the results. So I'll give you an example. Katie has been really good about this and I'll get a text message in the morning that will say, hey, good morning, Jenny. Because you introduced me to Todd, he introduced me to three other people. Thank you again. It's just a simple text message, but that is, I mean, those are just those little things that make a difference. Put your connections and contacts on a schedule to check in with them on a regular basis. And I want you to, this is gonna be a little different because a lot of people don't think like this, but you're going to treat every connection you meet or every contact, you're gonna treat them differently. You are not gonna treat them the same. For example, you're gonna have different categories. So, you know, you talk about the Uber networkers, they have the fingers on the pulse. You're gonna be talking to recruiters. You're gonna be talking to decision makers, peers, uh, vendors, um, people doing the hiring, human resource people. So you're going to check in with your Uber networkers probably every other week along with recruiters. You're going to check in with decision makers maybe once a month or your peers once a month. But when you sit and talk with them, talk about how often you can check in with them. And they will tell you, but I would really, really strongly recommend if you're going to, if you get to know some of these Uber networkers, ask them and say, hey, are you okay if I check in with you every other week? You want to stay in touch. I wanna to say that again. You want to stay in touch. After my initial meeting, I hear back from 50% of the people I meet. So when I hear of the jobs and the companies hiring and, and meeting new people, I share the, this information with the, people's, the people that stay in touch with me. I assume those that I don't hear from, I assume they've been hired which isn't always the case. 
Regular touch points can be done through email, LinkedIn, text messages, inviting them to events, sending them articles that they're interested in. Your touch points do not have to be work-related. If you see a role in a company that, that where you have a connection in that company, reach out and ask if they would be comfortable getting their, your resume in front of that person or the hiring manager or the internal recruiter. The goal is to get your resume noticed and hopefully your name will be on top of their list of people they want to interview. As mentioned before, companies are more likely to hire someone that they know or have been referred to compared to an unknown candidate. The more people in your network, the greater chances you're gonna have more connections in the different companies. So you wanna build up your LinkedIn and your whole, I mean, all of a sudden you're gonna find your network just expanding and spanning. One of the people I met applied for a job and he had three different people that had uh, connections, either with the hiring manager in the department. So imagine the hiring manager getting a person's resume from three different people in the company. He was noticed, interviewed, he got the job. So when you land a job, let your network know. Personal phone calls, emails, anything would be appreciated for those who helped you. Um, and those who went out of their way. For the masses, it's okay to send group emails. I've seen them done. Sometimes if you've networked with 50 people, how can you call 50 people individually? So I've seen those mass, those mass uh, emails go out. But do not let your LinkedIn profile be your way of announcing you got your new job. Okay. Any questions so far? While we wait for questions, I just want to emphasize the point you made, Jenny, I think is so important is that contact as many people as you can at the organizations you're reach, you're trying to pursue. You know, I uh, occasionally get somebody, you know, they'll say, I'm looking for a position at United Health Group. And I say, I may have a couple of referrals for you. And they say, oh, I know somebody there. Well, you know, United Health Group has 300,000 employees. It's probably good to know more than one or two people. Mm -hmm. And so keep going and talk to anybody you can because you never know who's going to be able to refer you or, or uh, give you the right introduction for the jobs you're looking for. Well, actually, the person that went to those three people, he got a, a response saying thanks, but no thanks. He got it like within half hour of applying. He said, wait a minute, this fits. I know this fits. So he went after and he contacted his network and he just ignored that email and he got the job. He, exactly right. Sometimes systems are set up to throw some people out and you get that automated response. Don't rely Absolutely. on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be any questions right now. Okay. I got another don't. And I kind of mentioned this before. When we meet and we have 30 minutes, please don't assume the 30 minutes is for you to do all the talking. I'm gonna be on, I'll tell you a secret. I only can handle talking for 10 minutes and then you'll see the glassy eye look on me and you'll try to see me try to focus on what you're saying. But I, my threshold is about 10 minutes of ongoing talking. So please be sensitive to how much information people can take in. And so that's where I say, please do 60% listening, 40% talking. That makes a big difference. If you can think that way, I think you'll find these conversations pretty effective. So, okay, I've got, I don't have a slide for the one for developing a plan and sticking to it. Um, you, you're gonna meet people, you probably already have, they're gonna give you a formula of, of what to follow. And they're gonna say, you need to meet these many people a day, these many people a week, you need to have these many interviews. And you, you're going to get a job. You should get a job within these many months. It's all over the place. Take this with a grain of salt. Because some people get jobs right away. Others, it's going to take them time. You're putting enough pressure on yourself. You don't need to put these rules in your head, which adds more pressure to you. We all come from different levels of tolerance. Some of you, you can meet five people a day. Others, one to two people is plenty. What's important is to keep this consistent. Create a plan and stick to it. 
go with a pace you're comfortable with because if you're not, it's gonna show and I'm gonna see it. So great, any questions? Just adding to your point is you asked for the meeting, so you should have an agenda of what you want to talk about and what you want to ask them and not expect them to run the meeting for you. And I think that's often people show up, they ask for a networking meeting, they show up and wait for the person they ask for to uh, kind of run it from there. And that's, that's uh, backwards. I have one last don't. Can I share it? This is probably the one that annoys me the most. Um, so after people have helped you, you've landed your job and you get super busy. I get it, we all do. And then people are going to say, hey, can you pay it forward? I met you a while ago. Can you meet these people? You get busy, you kind of forget to respond. I get it. But they reach out to you again. Hey, can you meet these people? They're looking for a job. You get, I get it. Uh, you get busy, I get it. But remember, if you lose your job again, how are people going to react to you if you go back to them and say, hey, remember me? I talked to you two years ago. I kind of ignored you five, six different times, but I need your help again. So again, be aware of that. Be sensitive to that. So we're going to talk tips and suggestions. I'm going to ask you to write this one down and put this on a post-it note. And I'm going to wait because I, I really want you to do this. And you're gonna stick this post-it note somewhere where you are on your computer, somewhere where you can see it every day. And I'm gonna just give you 30 seconds to find something to write this down. Okay, 20 seconds. Stop the negative help, um, stop the negative help uh, head chatter. Stop it, we all do it. People want to help you. You are, they are not blowing you off. And I hear this over and over and over again from people saying, I just, they, I'm bugging them. I don't want to bug them. So they are not, you are not bugging people. People get distracted. So you reaching out to them is okay. You are not bugging them. You are being professionally persistent. Put down professionally persistent. It's not like every day, maybe you check in with them every other week or once a month. That's professional persistence. Create a support system, your safe place. Team up with others. You can share ideas, connections, jobs you're hearing about, get feedback. I would recommend you meet on a regular basis so you can keep one another accountable. You can't take anything personally. Some of you are will get ghosted. Some of you have been ghosted. So when you send out an email as a follow-up, you don't hear back resend the email maybe a week later. Sometimes you're going to have to send an email like to the HR person, maybe even, a, maybe even a third email. I continue to get surprised how some of these recruiters and HR people are not letting people informed in the process, especially after they've had a few interviews with the company. Find the best method to reach people. Not everybody's going to look at their LinkedIn messages and not everyone's going to read their personal emails. So when you have these networking meetings, ask them what is the best way to contact you. Advocate for yourself. How can you get if you don't ask? Take breaks when you're in a funk. Job transitions have ups and downs and it can be very isolating. Pick up a part-time job. I have a friend of mine who was a VP of HR and she worked at a garden center. And I know a CIO that got a job at the Apple store at Mall of America. Uh, I recently ran into somebody who's in transition and he was working at Trader Joe's. Your time isn't their time. Volunteer. Remember that feeling about doing something kind for others? Disruption to the family can turn into some really great life lessons. Harry, do you want to share yours? <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you know, I when um, 
things get tough. You got to figure out how to get through it and what's uh, most important. And, um, you know, in um, 2002, I started my own recruiting firm. And then, then we hit uh, the recession in 2008 and things got really bad. And uh, for about a year and a half, maybe closer to two years, I was writing checks into the business to keep everybody afloat instead of uh, taking any money out. And we came very close to losing everything. And uh, it was just really hard, but it was one of the most formative times for my family and I to go through in terms of building resiliency and trusting God and, and uh, working on how can we get through this together and, and come out stronger in, in the process. And so, you know, going through those tough times, nobody, I, I don't want to go through that again, um, but I don't want to, I wouldn't trade that for anything. It was just an incredible time for, for our whole family, actually. And, uh, you know, realizing that those times are the times you grow in life, you know, it, it's great. And we're always pursuing those easier times in life when things are going our way and, and, uh, everything's kind of on autopilot and, and it feels great not to have stress and worry in your life, but, uh, you don't grow during those times. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, I, I think you need both. And the reality is we live in a world that not everything goes great all the time. You're never locked in that now everything's going to be perfect the rest of the way out. It just doesn't work that way. We're always either uh, coming out of a crisis of some kind or going into one. And so how you manage through that is uh, uh, really telling. You make the point of volunteer or helping others. And one of the things I found during that, you know, I wanted to, when things were tough and stressful and and everything seemed to be going the wrong way. I wanted to isolate and just uh, huddle up at home and not do anything else. But uh, finding ways to serve other people and be helpful, it's pretty hard to be completely down about yourself when you're helping somebody else in life. And so um, finding ways to, to volunteer and help others in some way, I think is a really important in terms of your own attitude as well. Thanks for sharing. Um, I'll go on to some tips and suggestions. So not everyone will accept LinkedIn invites um, from random people, I won't. Make sure when you do send a LinkedIn message or an invite, personalize your message. You might even wanna talk about shared connections, but be really careful about using people's names. I've had people reach out saying, hey, they're using your name to link in with me. That person never got my permission. So really be aware if you're gonna, if you're gonna leverage somebody's name, get their permission before you do it. Find a way to personalize your reach outs. Um, I was on a panel of, um, a little while ago talking in front of a group about networking and I got a lot of requests that evening uh, to link in. But I remember Susan, she sent me a note and she said, you had something, you said some things that really had me thinking. And I have just a couple more questions I wanted to ask you. Would you be open to meeting up for coffee? And it was so different than anybody when everybody else. I had 70 requests and she stood out. And I, of course, I met her for coffee. And Susan and I, she's like one of my dear friends now. So not, and I and I went, I'm gonna stress this one. Not every contact you meet has to be a meaningful connection. It's okay. Sometimes you're gonna meet somebody and you're just not gonna click. It's perfectly fine. It happens. Remind coworkers what your previous roles have been because some of these coworkers knew you from 10 years ago. So they put you in a box of what you did 10 years ago. So you need to update them on the knowledge and the experience, the latest skills you've had. So then they can kind of take you out of that box they put you in. There's a lot of great information on the internet um, of how to network the muse, podcasts, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, Pinterest, and blogs. Stay relevant. Uh, be open to learning. Get a career coach. Take classes. Get certified. Take this time to learn a new hobby. Um, start an exercise program. I have a friend of mine that started photography. Well, he got published a few times. Another one of my contacts started to eat healthy. He lost 80 pounds and kept it off. When you're doing things you enjoy, you will give off great energy. Um, it's okay to say you're in between jobs. It's okay. I like I'm in between success. 
because you get rid of that mindset that you have to have a job in order to get a job, those days are gone. So with company mergers and reorgs, acquisitions, um, outsourcing, the list goes on, employees will get impacted and it's not gonna change. Make networking an ongoing part of who you are. Don't just make networking because uh, uh, you're looking for a job. Just make this part of your practice. Another really good book to read is Never Search Alone, The Job Seekers Playbook by Phil Terry. I mentioned in the beginning that I've helped over 3,000 people during their job search um, since 2008. But remember this, everybody lands. It's just a matter of when and where. And then one final thing, People haven't met you yet. One day, one of the people in your network or people in your network will come back and they're going to ask for your help. Better yet, you might end up hiring them. That's it. Thank you. Hey, okay, question. Terrific. Yeah, we've got a hi, George and George Murray online oh, and talk about hi, uh, Uber networkers. He's he's one of them, so uh, <laughs> he's a great person. Uh, how can professionals effectively follow up after a networking event or meeting to maximize their connections and build strong professional network? And what are some key elements to include in the networking plan to ensure long-term success? And then as a follow-up, what do you say with those that you reach out to, but it falls on deaf ears? How many times do you follow up before you walk away? Okay, I'll address the falling on deaf ears. That, that, that's like my line. That's, um, I mean, I'm in business development, so I get deaf ears often, which I'm fine. It's what I do. And I, it's funny when people network, I say, now you understand, you know, because they say, I don't want to be blown off. And it's like, well, you got to kind of feel like you're in business development when you're, when you're out looking for a job. Um, I, you know, at this point in my life, it depends on your tolerance. I reach out maybe three times. I kind of move on, but here's what I want to know. If I am going to introduce you to my connection and my connection blows you off, I want to know. Because then what I can do is go back and I can give them a gentle nudge. And I'll say, if they're, especially if they're a good friend of mine, I'll say, hey, did Terry get a hold of you? They're like, oh, oh my gosh, I have been so busy. Thanks for reminding me. I do that stuff all the time. So don't hesitate to go back to the original person that connected you. Sometimes it's good for them to know that they're not responding back and then they won't refer people out to them. So it's, it's good information either both ways. Um, what was the first one about cultivating relationships? Harry, what was that question? Yeah, how can professionals effectively follow up after a networking event to maximize their connections and build a strong professional network? And what are some, some key elements to include in the networking plan? Well, I'm gonna go back to Susan. Um, she personalized it. She took the information that I said. She went back and, and, and kind of talked about a few things I mentioned. So if you go back to the person and say, hey, I met you at a, at a meetup group, then I really liked how you said this, or I really like this. They're gonna remember you and you can say, hey, I'm the one that wore the purple shirt. And I really like what you said about this. Right away, you paid attention to them and said, love to talk with you. I'd love to see if we can just meet up for coffee or, or do a Zoom call. I, you know. That's how I would start it, but don't just send an, an, uh, a uh, message and say, or don't just do an intro and say, hey, thanks so much. It was nice meeting you. Get into what you talked about. Stand out. Does that answer the question? I think so. Somebody else is asking one that you partially answered, but maybe want to dive into a little bit further. But she says, uh, I connected with people on LinkedIn and they agreed a meeting with me. But then uh, when I ask for some times, uh, they don't respond. And sometimes uh, they'll even ask me to send them an email with the dates and times, but, but then crickets after that. So how okay. do you reach out? How many times? And how do you deal with well, that? This is my thinking. If they agreed to meet with you, believe them. Yeah. Believe them. And, and look, so basically, some, well, some people I say, they'll say to me, Jenny, I don't even check LinkedIn messages. So when you do that first initial, they agreed to meet with you right away, say, what's the best way to reach you? Find the best way, because I know quite a few people I know say, I rarely check LinkedIn. They may say, here's my mobile. Let's do it through mobile. Send me a text message. So just find out the best message. Because again, if they agreed to meet with you, they did. 
and you can just hold them to it and say, hey, you know, I know this is busy. People do get busy. Things come up. People deal with death. They build, deal with illness. They deal with um, going out of town. So they're, sometimes you're going to hear like, well, I am so sorry. My mother passed away. I've been out for a few weeks. You know, you're going to hear these stories. So just assume maybe something came up, but maybe wait a week or say, hey, you're probably busy right now. I'll check back in a week. So let them know you're not going to go away. You're just going to check back later. And if they keep blowing you off, let your contact know that's happening. Totally agree. You know, one of the, as a recruiter, I live on LinkedIn. And one mm -hmm. thing that's really happened in the last few years here is uh, more and more people don't pay attention to their LinkedIn messages. Mm -hmm. And so response rates on LinkedIn messages have dropped dramatically over the last few years. And so many times people that are using LinkedIn exclusively to send messages, they think people are blowing them off when in fact, mm -hmm. they just never saw the message at all. So try to find an email address and send them a message in some other way. And then, as you said, people just get busy and, and uh, they're not blowing you off. It just your, your uh, message kind of falls lower and lower in their inbox and outlook and they forget to get back to you. And then it's, you know, three weeks have gone by. Now it feels a little awkward to them. And so it falls off the map. Reach out to them again. I guarantee they're going to appreciate the prompt and, and uh, respond to you, you know, a second or third time out. So don't. Hey, can I? Piggyback yeah. on what you said, what you said was so important because I'm in a role where I know people, I've helped people and I've got these relationships with them and, you know, I've helped their spouses, I've helped their kids, I've helped their neighbors and I sometimes feel they're blowing me off and I'm thinking, whoa, why am I feeling this way? Just so you know, I get those same feelings. So yeah. if I'm feeling it, I know you're feeling it and I just have to realize I, that's the chatter that I need to put on the, on the computer, right? And I just, I reach out again and say, hey, I, I, you know, I know you're busy. I'll check with you later. I get a message back maybe a month, two months later saying, oh my gosh, you were at the bottom of my, of my LinkedIn messages, didn't even see it. I am so sorry, but I know they're not blowing me off, but I do, I do have that voice in my head. So I go there. Exactly. So somebody's saying, can you please share uh, names of recommended books? And I'm, since George is on the line, I'm going to. Yeah ask him to put a link to his book in there. Actually, when George a few years ago went through his own job search, he learned a ton and applied it in, in tremendous ways and actually wrote a book called Hired How to Cut Your Job Search Time in Half. And I highly recommend it. And I, George, if you can put the uh, link in there have, so people can have access to it. But Jenny, you mentioned a couple of books in your presentation. And, and then I uh, also recommend a 20-minute networking meeting by Marsha Bollinger and, and uh, Nathan Perez. You can find that on Amazon as well. It's another great, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, it, there's different views on networking and it doesn't have to be 20 minutes, but uh, it's, uh, it's a great primer on how to prepare for, for networking meetings as well. So but the, um, the book that George wrote, I, I will say that's such an incredible reference. You can just use mm -hmm. that. I sent it to my kids. I've sent it to friends. There's every chapter you're going to learn, you're going to go back to. The books I mentioned in this presentation, it's more about the giving, reciprocal. That was kind of my theme because that's so important. But if you really want a good book, George, I mean, it's every, he nails it. He just nails the, the way I think. Agreed. You put the link into the chat so you can uh, click on that and, and uh, certainly recommend getting a copy of that. He says, uh, Jenny is my energy coach on my personal board of advisors. <laughs> Good choice. But he also asks, you know, what do great networkers do to really set them apart from the crowd and make them memorable? You know, when for you, Jenny, and, and for George and, and myself and others that meet with a lot of people, after a while, a lot of people start sounding the same. So how do you set yourself apart? Anything else? Well, if you want to address that, you know, what are some ways to uh, kind of set yourself apart? Oh, you, oh, okay, sorry. Um, well, when I gave those, you know, those little things that matter, like the text message that I got from Katie, it's just those little, simple little things. Um, the listening, coming prepared, um, reminding them. It's just these little basic things that just, you know, it's, it's like the little polish and you're kind of going, oh, it's kind of the surprises you get. Like, wow, I didn't expect that. Um, you meet them, they greet you. They want to hear about me. It's like, wow, that's pleasant. It's like, they do rather than just sitting down and 
giving me their marketing plan, their resume and going on. When someone sits and talks and asks me about me, I'm like, whoa, this is really nice. So make it that way. Absolutely. As you emphasized from the beginning, it's being authentic and building a relationship rather than a transactional conversation. I um, I can't say, and I, I tell them this isn't an interview and they don't listen. I go, this is not an interview. And they still talk. <laughs> and I think, oh, and I think, well, I can't, I cannot connect them because I'm like, I get a call saying, Jenny. I, I, so I, I try to coach a little bit, but my, I'm not, I don't want to be the coach. I want to just help them. And they don't pick up on the, this is not an interview. I don't know. Some people, I think they're just really focused on, you know, I've got to, I got to go through my steps when I talk to this person. When I talk to Janie, I got to go through my steps. So. Yeah, you're trying to build a, or gain an advocate that can help you, not a, an employer that's going to hand you a job. Bingo. You want to create a friend. I, I have a, you know, with, with one of the people in my network, you know, he sends me his, I mentioned, he sends me his itinerary when he travels. He goes, hey, I traveled here. You got, Jenny, you got to go here because he knows I love to travel. Um, I know some people that try new restaurants and they'll go, this is a great restaurant. I'm going to remember these people. Absolutely. Any other questions? Bug. Jenny, thanks so much. It was, uh, I, like I said, through most of almost all of your presentation, I just kept smiling because that's, I, I think you're, you're nailing it. And that's exactly what I recommend to people as well. And, and you, uh, George and Jenny is awesome. Totally. Oh, agree. Thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, really appreciate your time today and, and sharing what has worked for you and how you've helped people and what you've recognized in, in uh, your networking. And, you know, I, and I know you get this, you do it yourself, but networking works best when it becomes a lifestyle, not just when you're looking for a job, but throughout your entire career. And there's a lot of benefits of knowing people that can help you in your career and, and getting advice and ideas from, but uh, that you can add to as well. And, and when you're building and nurturing those relationships, then they really are much more valuable when you're looking for a job as well. But uh, it don't quit once you land. Here, I'll give an example. Um, and it's perfectly fine. I know people that they get, they, you know, they work these big companies and then they go through reorgs and they're reorged out. I mean, it, this is yeah. what's going on, all, you know, Medtronic, for instance. And they lose their job maybe three years ago. They get this job. They come back and they come back to me maybe three years later. Oh my gosh, I'm all over it. In fact, a lot of times they reach out to them and say, I heard there's reorg. Let me know what I can do to help you. But they've stayed in touch with me for that three year period. It's okay if you haven't stayed in touch with a person and then you come back. But if they ask you for help to help another person and you ignore them, I think you need to do a little bit of recovery and you need to say, you know, I was heads down, busy. I am so sorry. I've lost my job again. You, you, somehow you got to recover that because some of those people who, and Harry, you want to, if you want to add to this, I'm going to remember you. Not that I'm going to, I'm, I don't take it personally. It's like, wait a minute, they're not helping, but then you lose your job again and you come back. So just recover on that one. Cause some people are saying, I can't reach out. I'm embarrassed. No, recover it, own it. Don't do it again. And I'm agreed. I, a lot of people have gone through that saying, I just didn't keep my network up. I was too busy and I will next time. You know, there's easy ways to do it. It doesn't mean you always have to reach out and have a conversation or coffee with everybody. No. But uh, you know, many people on LinkedIn post their birthdays. So put it on your calendar and just send them a quick note on their birthday, not through LinkedIn, but through a personal email, just saying, hey, happy birthday. Hope it's a great year ahead. And it, you just stay top of mind and they realize you're thinking about them. And that's that makes all the difference in the world. Thanksgiving. I don't do Christmas, you know, because everyone seems to do, but at Thanksgiving, I'll just do a quick email or a quick LinkedIn saying, hey, you know, just grateful for the friendship. Then I'm really glad we met three years ago. So it's just my quick thinking about you. Absolutely. And especially when you are just offering something up like that, not asking for anything at the moment, no. it just makes a much stronger impression. So. Jenny, thanks again. Really appreciate it. And uh, um, hope to uh, have you as Jenny and I were talking beforehand is uh, I'm looking forward to when we get back to in-person meetings with Crossroads and hope to have her live in person uh, at one of those coming up 
sometime in the future. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, uh -huh. want to just run through a few things for you to take advantage of with Crossroads beyond these webinars. Um, you know, I, I had a conversation with someone last week and they said, you know, well, how much do you charge for these uh, other things that you offer? And as if these webinars were uh, 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 just a hook to get you uh, to pay for something. And everything we do is free. There's, uh, we're uh, helped by a group of volunteers. I'll show you some pictures later here shortly, but uh, um, it's, there's nothing that we charge for. Uh, if you're in one of the classes, we, uh, there's um, a book we use in that class and you know, we recommend people buy it. But even that, if, if the cost of the book would keep you out of the class, let us know and we'll pay for that as well because we want people to take advantage of everything we offer and there's no charges for anything. So let me share a screen here and I'll run through a number of things real quickly. And I really hope that you're able to um, take advantage of, of uh, all these different things we offer. Hang on, let me find my screen here. Bingo, hopefully you see that. So if this is your first time at one of our webinars and uh, when you registered, you gave us your mailing address, you're gonna get uh, one of these books in the mail here. It'll be on the way and you should get it in the next few days. But uh, how long, oh Lord, how long? It's a great devotional on uh, things that you face during the job search. There's an index in the back that you can even look up and you know, here's the struggles I'm having and, and uh, what's written about that. And it's a, it's a tremendous resource and it has been a great inspiration and help for people to get through the challenge of a job search. And we just want you to have that as a free gift from us. So as I said, if this is your first time and you uh, haven't received one in the past and you gave us your mailing address, it'll be on its way. Now I should qualify that because <laughs> I'm really grateful. We get people from all over the world that have been on our webinars and including you know, from England and Germany and Africa and Australia, which is just mind boggling to me. And I'm grateful you join us, but unfortunately we're not gonna send these internationally. We also get people from all over the country and you certainly will receive one even if you're not in Minnesota here. But uh, um, sorry for, for those of you that are watching from uh, other parts of the world, but uh, glad that you're able to join us. I hope it's been uh, worthwhile for you. Anyway, that'll be on the way here shortly. Uh, I think in order to register for this webinar, you had to go to our website, but I really encourage you to explore it further. mncrossroads.com really has all the detailed information of everything we offer. And uh, you can sign up for the different resources and events and uh, different ways you can get help. And check it out, look into the uh, different things that are on there. We have a job board page. There's a number of companies that know what we do, know that great people participate in Crossroads and are looking for hires. And so uh, we're not uh, indeed.com where, where we get uh, hundreds or thousands of postings a, a day or a week, but uh, we do get a number of great jobs that uh, get on there that uh, hopefully something would fit for you. And uh, what we find is that when it comes through Crossroads, when you apply or when you contact somebody, make sure you mention that you found out about it through Crossroads, uh, they often get special consideration. So pay attention to that but we have a resources page with all kinds of information. We have uh, um, information of the upcoming webinars of uh, classes and different things that I'll describe here in a moment. On a weekly basis, there's a number of ways you can get plugged in. And, and one of them that I think is critically important is our networking group. And they meet at nine o'clock. So they'll be starting here shortly. Um, on every, they meet every Thursday morning, it's all online. You do have to register on the website to get the uh, link for the Zoom meeting for that. Um, but it's a great way to trade and receive um, contacts and information about companies and leads and ideas that can be helpful for you. It's run by uh, Wes Tang and Wes uh, Roper. We call them Wes One and Wes Two, but they do a fantastic job of making sure that everybody gets some help and encouragement and inspiration each week but uh, nobody goes in and out anonymously. And so you're, I really encourage you to take advantage of all that. Um, we have one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching available. If you just wanna talk through your situation with somebody, uh, whether it's having them critique your resume and give you some advice or uh, pre help prepare for an interview or just to talk through your situation. Many times people just feel like they, uh, 
don't have anybody that gets it, that uh, understands what they're, the challenges they're facing in their job search and they're looking so, for some fresh ideas, feel free to use our one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, resources anytime. One of our volunteers, you sign up online, one of our volunteers will reach out to you to set up either a Zoom meeting or a phone call. And uh, you can have that discussion with them and get some uh, individual help that way. So feel free to check that out online and sign up as well. This uh, process of looking for a job is a, an emotional roller coaster. You probably have experienced that already. And uh, getting some spiritual support in the process, I think, makes a huge difference. I'm so grateful we have a team of people that are just, they, they love to pray for you individually and, and everybody that attends as a group. But uh, if you have a specific uh, prayer request, I encourage you to check that page out on our website. You can put that in and somebody will follow up and just let you know that you've been prayed for about that. If you feel like you are really in a rut or, or would like some more personalized uh, ongoing help spiritually or uh, emotionally through this process, sign up for our soul care. You can find the details on that and one of our uh, counselors will reach out and talk to you and set up a time to meet more regularly. The meat and potatoes of everything we offer through Crossroads is really through our online classes. We have an eight week small group class, uh, usually anywhere from six to 10 or 12 people. And uh, we go through every aspect of a successful job search. So you can really get a better understanding of what are the best things to focus on, how to be most effective in your search, how to uh, uh, make headway and feel more confident about the things you're doing every day. But we start with attitude and talking about, you know, how to get in the right frame of mind and are you presenting yourself as positively as you can to people and not letting some of the baggage of your last job or your career so far get in the way of you uh, being considered for opportunities. And we go through some assessments and talk a lot about networking and targeting companies, but we focus on getting your resume up and up to speed and best practices there and, and interviewing skills and negotiating and, and selecting the right job. And there's so much more. And as much as the content I think is so strong in terms of helping you do an effective job search, I think equally important is that weekly light accountability and check-in and encouragement and moral support from others that are in the same boat and not feeling like you're an island and isolated by yourself. I can't emphasize the importance of, of uh, getting back up to even keel emotionally each week as you go through this process because it, that roller coaster of emotions really can wear on you after a while. And then throughout the eight weeks, we also talk about what does God think about your job search in your life and, and how does that um, impact everything that you're doing. So really encourage you to check out the details online for that. You can sign up uh, on the website for the next class coming up. We've got another one. We start one every month. Uh, there's another one coming up in March. And uh, you can, as I say, find the details online and, and uh, sign up there. It's uh, by far the best way you can get the most in-depth and ongoing help in this process. So take advantage of it. You know, I think for so many people, they try to go through this process alone and it's hard. And I think having community and input, encouragement and good ideas and strategies uh, along the way can make all the difference in the world to speed up you landing into the next job. Um, join our LinkedIn group. If you put in MN Crossroads Career Network up in the search box in LinkedIn, you'll find where we're at and you can uh, sign up there and you'll find all kinds of great resources. People are posting all the time. We have companies that'll post jobs on there from time to time. People will post um, uh, networking tips or, or uh, ideas for your job search. We have uh, news of things that are events coming up on Crossroads that uh, people you can find out for regularly. But I think most importantly is there's well over 2000 people in the group now all of them have been through crossroads in one way or another and uh, um, are just willing to be networking contacts for you. So if there is a particular company you're targeting that you'd like to find uh, opportunities in or want to pursue, see if there's somebody in our LinkedIn group that can um, make an introduction for you or at least give you some advice and insight about the organization and uh, they're willing to talk to you. And it's a great way to give back. So many times people ask me, uh, you know, how can they give back? Well, this is the best way. Stay in the LinkedIn group and allow other people to reach out to you as a resource for your company wherever you land in the future. And so check it out, take advantage of it, and uh, be part of that group on an ongoing basis as well. 
this webinar and all of our previous ones get posted on our YouTube channel. And so you can review other topics that have been talked about and, and uh, check them out and get more details. And if there's something you may have missed in the webinar today, you can check it out. It'll get posted by tomorrow at the latest. I hope to have it up before the end of the day today. But again, there, if you put MN Crossroads Career Network in the uh, YouTube search box, you'll find us. And all of our videos from the last three years are posted on there for you to uh, gain information from that. And uh, um, hopefully that's a tremendous ongoing resource for you there. I am grateful for Thrivent. They have been a great partner for Crossroads for many years now. They uh, contribute in all kinds of ways, both uh, people that have volunteered and they contribute money to help us do the things we do and, and all kinds of other things. One of the things they have available to you is that uh, a three webinar series, and you can find details on our website for that, on financial considerations during tr your job transition. And so they have uh, talk about how to budget more effectively and talk about uh, ways that you can find to, to save money during your transition that you may not have thought of. They have talked about resources when uh, things seem to be running dry. And they talk about uh, you know, how to think about your 401k plans you've left behind or uh, other uh, um, financial vehicles that uh, may be a challenge for you. These are not sales presentations. They are really informational to help you through this process. And I'm grateful that they're willing to do it. So you can find the details online and uh, really encourage you to take advantage of that because certainly financial stresses during this period can be overwhelming sometimes and they can give you some good ideas on how to manage through that. As I mentioned earlier, I'm grateful for a team of volunteers. We actually have over 40 people that help in one way or another. And we can't do everything we do through Crossroads without a lot of people involved. And so this is just a sampling of many that uh, do volunteer, but there's even more and I'm grateful for every one of them. And so as you recognize people and, and uh, on, on here or otherwise, and I encourage you to thank them because nobody's getting paid. Nobody's uh, doing this because of uh, any adoration or any uh, um, financial gain, but rather just uh, because they have a heart to help people and they bring expertise or understanding of this process to the table that is incredibly uh, helpful. If you don't have a church home, I really encourage you to take advantage of one of the churches that participates in Crossroads. When we do meet in person, we have three churches around the Twin Cities that uh, have meetings, and it's Woodbury Lutheran in, in Woodbury and North Heights Church in um, Arden Hills and Grace Church in Eden Prairie, where we started Crossroads here locally. And uh, all of them have their services streaming online on Sunday mornings and they meet in person. And, you know, I think just building community and getting some spiritual support and uh, encouragement from others in, a, in uh, relationships, I think is so critically important through all this. So I encourage you to take advantage of uh, your own church if you have one or plug into one of these if uh, you are looking for a new church home. I'm so grateful that uh, you were able to join us today. I hope it was worthwhile and uh, uh, that you got some good information that's going to help you in this process. If uh, I can be of help, you can reach me through the website or just at info at mncrossroads.com. I get those emails and uh, I'm always glad to be of help or, or uh, offer things as, as we go forward. Uh, have a great day and uh, Hopefully we see you at our next webinar. We'll be coming up the first Thursday of March. And that's a morning webinar. I'm trying to remember who we've got lined up. I believe it's Nancy Frash. We'll be talking about resumes and how to get uh, the attention you want and from your resume. And it's a great substantive presentation. And hopefully you can join us for that or you land a job before that. And that's the ideal situation. Best wishes and uh, hope to see you again. Take care.